This chart question is harder than number 14, which involved a graph, but I'm gonna still go about it the same way that I did for number 14. It's not gonna work, but I'm still gonna do it just to show you kind of how we're supposed to respond to these questions and deal with the complexities that they present. So if you didn't see number 14, what I did was I ignored the passage completely and focused just on the chart, the graph, and then compared that to the answer choices. Some of the choices were just factually incorrect compared to the, to the graph. Here, the question is a little bit more complicated, so it might mean that we need to do more work anyway, but I'm still gonna start with the simpler version just to show you it's not the worst thing in the world if you do that. So in this case, they want us to um, use data from this uh, table to support the underlying claim. So there's a claim here, but again, let's not read it yet. Let's just go right to the chart and compare that to the choices. So the chart tells me the Swahili speakers in three African countries. It tells us how many people um, are speaking Swahili in each of those countries and what percent of the population that is. So choice A. Tanzania has approximately 61 million Swahili speakers. Well, that seems true, so that's okay. Which is much more than the estimated total number of people worldwide for whom Swahili is their first language. Well, that information is not on the chart. It's probably in the passage, and I can skim for it, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it as a question mark. I don't know if that is factually true or not. But regardless, I'm not allowed to eliminate a choice where I have this big question mark. It's just gotta sit there. It could be right. Could be wrong, we don't know. And so we'll deal with the question mark later, but let's still look at some of these other choices and see if maybe they're just plain, plain wrong. And then maybe that can give us the answer as A without having to bother to check that question mark. So let's just see. Choice B, Tanzania is estimated to have at most 15 million Swahili speakers. Well, no. We literally just said that that was wrong, right? It says it's 61 million Swahili speakers. So it just does not, no, it does not have at most 15 million. The chart literally says it's 61 million. So well, just get rid of that. That's wrong. Uh, C, approximately 100% of the people who speak Swahili as their first language live in Kenya, which is a total population of approximately 55 million people. Well, okay, there's two facts there. The 55 million seems correct because that's the approximate number of speakers and that's Per, uh, estimated as 100% of the population, so that seems okay. There is a total population of 55 million, but this first piece seems to be a misinterpretation. Approximately 100% of the people who speak Swahili as their first language live in Kenya. Well, then why do we have these other countries in in this chart, right? The, the Congo and Tanzania, what, what are they doing there? Now notice, this chart is not saying anything about whether Swahili is someone's first language or not. It's just saying whether they speak it and then what percent of the population speaks it? That's it. We don't know anything about them being their first, second, third language. So um, I, this is just a misinterpretation of the data in the chart. This 100%, that's not there. So I think that this is just wrong. Maybe for you, if you're a little bit more skeptical, you're, you're gonna keep this as a question mark, but I would say no, this is to me a very clear misinterpretation of what the columns are about. So this is maybe a benefit of doing it my way where you look at the chart and the graph first, is then you don't have to worry about all the other stuff that the passage is saying. You can just focus on interpreting that chart. But I just will warn you, sometimes the passage helps you understand the chart better. So there isn't really just one way to do these. The key is just be flexible. That's a good strategy for the entire SAT, is no matter how long you study, there will always be questions that are weird. So you gotta be flexible to deal with the weird stuff. But if you've got more strategies that you can use to be flexible with, then you'll be more likely to get the question right no matter what you're presented with. So let's continue, let's look at D. Approximately 100% of Kenya's population speaks Swahili. Okay, yeah, that seems right, so that's good. Well, only about 25% of the Democratic Republic of the Congo's population sp speaks Swahili. Yeah, that seems good too. So look, this is a good example where we gotta be careful because right now we might be thinking, ah, it looks like D is right, right? Both parts of that are correct. And we only had one part of A that was correct. The other part we didn't know. So we had to leave it as a question mark. So we're better off going with the two check marks. Mm, no, because we haven't actually proven A wrong. We've just you know, proven part of it right. It's not the same thing. And so here is a good example where we are gonna need to go to the passage because we need to know what the student is saying so we can support what they're saying and this other fact that we didn't know before, how many people uh, worldwide have uh, Swahili as their first language. So let's see if we can answer these, these two questions. So go to the passage now. Swahili is estimated to be the first language of up to 15 million people worldwide. Okay, so now going back to A. Um, Tanzania has approximately 61 million Swahili speakers, which is much more than the estimated total number of people worldwide for whom Swahili is their first language, which is 15 million. So yes, that is true, right? So notice, 
Now this is why we couldn't eliminate A. Was, was This is also true in the same way that D is true. The facts match the passage, the facts match the, match the chart. So we've got to dive deeper. This is more about like main ideas now and which choice supports the main idea of this student. So right, let's get to this underlying piece. Uh, it's also an officially recognized language in Tanzania, Kenya, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which means these countries use Swahili in government documents and proceedings. But even in countries where almost everyone speaks Swahili, for many it isn't their first language, but is instead their second, third, or even fourth language. So we want a choice that talks about the idea of it being someone's first language. If we look at D, it doesn't mention that at all. It just talks about whether they speak it or not. It does not talk about what, when they learned it, right? When they learned it in the order of languages that they speak. I couldn't imagine speaking four languages. That's so impressive. But um, yeah, that's that's really an important idea. And so because we've eliminated B and C, I'm much more confident picking A now without much extra thought because that talks about it being their, um, where is it, first language. So A hits the facts that are in the chart and A hits the uh, idea that is contained in these underlined part, this underlined part. So it's the only one that does both. D matches the chart, but it does not match that underlined piece. It mentions nothing about first language or second language. Whereas notice, if we go back to some of the ones that we crossed out, um, yeah, choice C matches the, uh, the underline, but it does not match the chart. So this is the benefit of no matter how you do these, remembering that basically these chart graph questions are like two questions in one. They're asking you a question about interpreting the data and they're asking you a question about interpreting the passage. Sometimes one of those questions is way easier than the other and so there's a reason you might want to do it in, in a different order but I think breaking it down like that is the best way to make these questions easier overall is that then you don't have to think about everything at once. You can kind of segment it and just do one idea and then another and that'll just require some patience but you'll get the answer right if you're careful and and uh, most of the time, in my opinion, I find that it is easier to look at the graph or the chart first because I think it's just easier to kind of look at numbers and see if those numbers are going up and down and, and what the percentages are. That just seems easier to my brain than reading a passage where there might be some facts that are irrelevant, but that might then distract me as I'm looking through the answer choices. So just find the system that works for you. That's all it is. And like I said, be flexible because the SAT is all filled with all sorts of varieties of questions. So there is no one single strategy that will work perfectly every time. You've got to be able to adapt to the situation because the situation is going to change every time you take an SAT and even within one section of a, of a module.